from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. How you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Now. Today, let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Thank you very much. Okay, so the big deal is that it's Groundhog's Day. Now, or uh, Groundhog Day, or whatever you call it, because they're like 50,000 different groundhogs for every city and town in the country. But we here at Wendy follow our usual one. So that would be Puxatani Paul? Phil. Phil. <laughs> He's in Pennsylvania. And then there's one in Staten Island that I like to look after as well. Anyway, so Puxatawney Phil, Phil didn't see his shadow, which means that spring is gonna come early. <laughs> Allegedly. Why are all the men dressed like it's the 1800s? <laughs> you know? Anyway, speaking of warmer weather, um, I wanna remind you that Wendy's Hot Tropic giveaway kicks off on Thursday. Yes. So the wheel is back. This time we're sending you to Jamaica. Make sure that you watch every day for your chance to win a beautiful uh, vacation at Moon Palace Jamaica Grand in Ocho Rios. Uh-huh, it's all-inclusive, it's a resort, it's wonderful, it, the, the largest stretch of private beach in Ocho Rios, plus um, you'll get your round-trip airfare provided by the Jamaica Tourist Board. Yeah. Log, on to, log on to my Facebook page for your chance to enter, and good luck. Yeah. So, um, anyway, um, so Kim, Con uh, Kim uh, Kardashian and Amber Rose hung out last night. Uh, this is a story I didn't even feel like doing. Cause I smell a rat. And the rat is another reality show, a spinoff, something like that. Like, like I'm done, you know what I mean? But I'm doing it for you cause I figured you might care. Anyway, um, they buried the ratchet, I mean the hatchet. <laughs> the hatchet after Kanye got into that nasty Twitter war with uh, Amber and Wiz Khalifa and then he brought in their baby bash. So they posted uh, these pictures online. Kim's says, hashtag T anyone. By the way, they both look really beautiful, don't they? I mean, you gotta give it up. And then Amber posted swingers. I don't know what that means. I don't even care. But, you know, you know, just before I came out here, um, Hot Topics was telling me that TMZ posted that um, it was uh, Chris, right, mm -hmm. who summoned both girls to her mansion to hash it out, you see. 
So now, do you smell a rat? Yes. Okay. Uh, by the way, the same rat I smell is the same one with uh, Rob and uh, Black China. Yes. You, you know, so I really, you know, when I don't talk about this stuff, it's because I smell a rat. I can't be baited. I don't want you to be baited. I think that Rob and, and this girl right here, Black China, who's got nothing to lose, um, probably will have a reality show. And I'm sure that Chris is behind it. And what they do is they do this to us, wrap us in, then we fall for it, and then we're like, oh my. But this is where we need our hot topics here on Wendy, because I'm here to tell you, I smell a rat. Don't fall for it. Don't, don't fall for it. <clears throat> Black China's pretty though, isn't, isn't she? Yeah. Blonde hair, black hair, whatnot, pretty. The piercing of the dimple is interesting though, right? Yeah. You know how she's got that, that piercing thing? Anyway, cute, good for her. All right, let's move along. <laughs> Donald Trump is a loser! <laughs> They're the worst, but they're my people. <laughs> okay, so apparently he came in second place, as you know by now, to Senator Ted Cruz in the Iowa primary. Well, first of all, there's nothing wrong with second place. It's next to first place. <laughs> Ronald Reagan came in second place and still became the president. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, all right, so he's second. Some say that Donald didn't win because he didn't show up to the last debate. I agree, you know, he could have probably won, but he put his tail between his legs and, and didn't show up, which is what cowards do. You know, when you don't get your way, you don't play in the sandbox. Um, so Cruz is in first place. Hillary is only leading over Bernie Sanders by a nano vote you know, for the Democrats. Now, Hillary is 68, Bernie Sanders is 74, but I have to say he reads like 94. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> listen, when you're talking about leading the country and you, you have to do the math by the numbers, that's a bad 74, you all. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, am I, clap if you think that's a bad 74. <laughs> Same age as Martha Stewart, and Martha is still hot. Yeah. I still don't know how to vote. <laughs> like, what are we gonna do? Anyway, uh, Donald, by the way, is involved in a feud. Oh. And see, this is where, <laughs> you know, Donald, it's not very presidential when you get involved in a feud with a pop star. Adele. Oh. All right, and, and second of all, who hates Adele? Like, everyone loves her. There is no reason to not love Adele. Older, younger, Indian, Asian, black, white, you know, around the world, here in New York, people love Adele. But apparently, Donald, um, Adele wants Donald to stop playing her music at his rallies. Oh. Well, this wouldn't be the first time a star uh, you know, spoke up. Remember, Steven Tyler of Aerosmith um, asked that Trump not play his music at his rallies. Bruce Springsteen asked the same thing. Like, people don't even want to be associated. <laughs> and now Adele is saying the same, which that's weird, because she's not even, if he becomes president, she's not even affected, because she lives across the pond. <laughs> But even she's throwing you know, her towel in the race and saying, please stop playing my music. So he tweeted her, anyway, there's something going on between Adele and Donald Trump and it's not very presidential. That's all.
<clears throat> By now, everybody knows that Mariah Carey's got the most spectacular engagement ring. And she's engaged to her billionaire, um, James Packer. Uh, well, they're saying that everyone knows except for her four-year-old twins, Monroe and Monrocan. Well, here's the thing. You know, if you're a parent, you know, at four years old, they're able to digest certain information. The idea that Mariah accepted the ring has you know, come out that she's engaged and hasn't told her kids is a huge problem. But mark my word, no wait, shout out to Kanye. Mark my word. <laughs> I don't believe that Mariah will walk down the aisle with this guy. She's gonna do something that's gonna make him realize for as beautiful and talented and wealthy as she is, there's something a little annoying about, you know, <laughs> about not having a baby, but wanting a wife. You know what I mean? Like, like she's just, anyway, um, she hasn't shared with her kids because she thinks that they're too young to understand. I beg to differ. At four years old, kids understand. And, and you know, you've only dated him for a moment before you guys got engaged. As soon as you felt your heart falling for him, Mariah, you should have said to your kids, when he's not around, James, like as you're changing, you know, their uh, night clothes from day clothes or whatever, you know, do you like Mr. James? <laughs> <laughs> right? Brushing the hair. Do you think Mr. James would, um, do, would you mind if Mr. James and mommy one day got married? And then you talk to your daughter like a princess. You know, they understand that princess Barbie mess. You know what I mean? Do you, and then, then you talk to your son. Do you like Mr. James? Would you like to, you know, maybe one day toss a football with Mr. James? And so I think that she's wrong for this. She accepted the ring. She told us all about it. And the two most important people in her life don't know. Uh, Mariah also said that their, li their lives aren't going to change. Well, yes they are. You know, I mean, Mariah's a very wealthy woman, but imagine the size of the yacht you can get with billionaire money. And imagine, like, you don't have to wear the same clothes every day, you throw them in the garbage or give them away to Goodwill or whatever you do. I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, it's too, this is all too rich for my blood, but I do have to say that I believe that Nick, um, her soon to be ex-husband, because she is not yet divorced, people. Exactly. Nick needs to get involved and help soften the blow with the kids by saying, you know, mommy and daddy still love you, but Mr. James is a, a nice man. <laughs> and, and Mr. James and I get along very well, just so the kids don't start crying and whining and stuff. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, but like I said, this conversation is really mute because I don't believe that they'll actually get married. <laughs> Tonight is the night. TV is gonna give it to us good. The People versus O.J. Simpson. Okay. So it premieres tonight at 10 o'clock on FX. Courtney B. Vance, by the way, is going to play uh, Johnny Cochran. He'll be here tomorrow. Yes. Uh, problem with stuff that comes on at 10 o'clock is I need a disco nap during the day and then set my alarm for like 9.45 so I can splash some cold water and then keep my eyeballs open for one hour. But I'm watching and then tomorrow night, you know that Bernie Madoff um, movie comes on. Yeah, Richard Dreyfuss looks just like him, doesn't he? A real criminal. <laughs> anyway, oh Mike Epps, what are we gonna do? Uh, I was so sad when I found out after 10 years of being married, Mike Epps, our comedian friend, has filed for divorce from his wife, Michelle. Aww. 
Now it's alleged that he filed before her, which not for nothing, he who files first is the winner in my mind. <laughs> Even if you don't win, but it's just like, I got you before you can get me. Anyway, Mike claims that they've been separated since uh, last summer. Michelle says that she was blindsided by the divorce. The truth is somewhere in between. Uh, you know, I don't really believe that you're blindsided by divorce. I think that, the, you know, the ground is already swelling and grumbling. And then you kind of know. I also believe, Michelle, that you called TMZ to meet you at the airport. Now, now hold on, hold on. I don't know Michelle, a very beautiful woman, but she's not a celebrity, she's a wife of. So what is TMZ, and I know they have a sharp eye with those cameras at the airports, but what do you know for what Mike Epps' wife looks like? So how I'm feeling is that Michelle called them as soon as the plane land, like It's Michelle Epps. I am on my way outside right now. Catch me, because I've got the tea. In my, in my mind, right? So take a look at what she told TMZ after she called it was them. shocking? Yes. It was so he shocking. caught you off guard? Yeah, because I didn't know we were separated since the summertime. Okay. We've been doing everything a married couple does up until uh, January. Okay. So, yeah. So just after Christmas. Yeah. Well, I think when I saw him uh, walking down the streets of New York with the mysterious girl, yes. I think that was the, you know, that did it. Do you feel she probably called them? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, you want to know the picture of the mysterious girl? We already showed it to you on Hot Topics, but there she is. Now, at first I was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe that's an assistant or, you know, a helper or a publicist person or something like that. I don't, I don't know, but Michelle seems to feel that that's some woman, if you know what I'm saying, and they're divorcing. They have a couple of kids. It's just very sad. Although, you know, Mike probably filed before Michelle could because he's got two big projects coming up. And if he can get this divorce resolved before the projects come out, then he doesn't have to share that money. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Uncle Buck is the new sitcom coming out on ABC in the spring, okay? Plus he's got the Richard Pryor movie coming out. Oh. So he can share the old money with Michelle and keep the new money yes. for himself. Sad. So, uh, Jay-Z's former protege, Rita Ora, who I still have no idea who this woman is. <laughs> I mean, I think of her as a British socialite, like a beautiful girl who walks the red carpet for no reason. <laughs> you know, they're like, what projects are you promoting? She's like, no, I'm just here. <laughs> I, do you know who that is authentically? Clap if you know who that is authentically. <laughs> All eight of you. <laughs> and I'm talking about knowing her past the red carpet. And she changes her look a lot, so sometimes you have to squint to say, is that Rita Ora? Anyway, um, they're battling in court. Well, in December, Rita sued Jay-Z's record label, Rock Nation, claiming that uh, they, orf they orphaned her. That's not a word people use a lot anymore, do they? Orphan, it's so sad. That's when you don't have a mom or a dad. <laughs> you know, our dog, Shaquille, is here today. <laughs> Please don't clap too loud. He's probably back there doing the most at this point. Anyway, but he's an orphan. I mean, well, you know, he's a Cane Corso. Mom and dad got together. Then mom left town to go to North Carolina. And dad passed away from a lot of heat in a shed this past summer. So we're, I'm the only mom he has. And we're the only family he has. See, he's an orphan. That's such a sad word. Anyway, okay, so Rita feels like she's an orphan. 
and she wants out of her Rock Nation contract. Now, Jay-Z is suing her uh, back because he's claiming that Rock Nation spent over $2 million promoting her career. And she's only released one album. She owes them five albums. I mean, maybe I know a song if I hear it, but I just don't know the name. I only know her from being a socialite. And, and I said to Hot Topics, well, it sounds like Jay-Z's got a case. And then they said, what? whoa, whoa, whoa. She's the face of, and then they run down this list. They're like, okay, first of all, she was in Fifty Shades of Grey, which I saw. Recognized her immediately, but if you blinked, you would have missed it. She performed at last year's Oscars. Yeah. See, different person, right? Uh -huh. She's a, a Calvin Klein girl. That's Versace though, so maybe, maybe they fired her for that. You know what I mean? You know, this is not Calvin. Well, that, that's, that's a good one, Rita. But still, doesn't she look like a different person there than she did in the first? You, you know, when people don't know you, you have to stick with one look so that once they get to know you, then you change up your wigs and weave and whatnot. Anyway, she was the face of Madonna's Material Girl uh, clothing line. She was a face of DKNY. She was a face of Roberto Cavalli and a face of Adidas. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking the winner is going to be Jay-Z. Because without her doing all this, even though we don't know the music, but we know the face ofs, maybe he does owe her $2 million. Just saying, this is a story that we'll be following, kind of. <laughs> you down with OPP? <laughs> Let's talk about Naughty by Nature. Naughty is uh, still together, and um, they wanna bring you more music like OPP and Hip Hop Array, some really just <laughs> fun hip hop anthems. Although I like the whole Naughty stretch, like one of my favorites from them is I Do My Dirt All By My Lonely. <laughs> like a really grisly beat, and really underground words. Um, anyway, so they are apparently taking donations on Kickstarter. I know, they don't know what to say. <laughs> they wanna raise $100,000 to make a new album. And you know, all due respect to TLC, but you know, with uh, Left Eye not being here, there's only two original members of TLC. They take the third, like Little Mama sometimes, and sometimes um, Crispy Creek, who? <laughs> Remember, she won? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, Crispy. Are you the girl? Yeah, yeah on, on, are you the girl? Anyway, the point is, is that TLC, I don't, even though they're legendary, I look at them in a different lane than I look at Naughty by Nature. I just feel like Naughty by Nature is not supposed to be doing Kickstart, just like Boy George is not supposed to be doing Celebrity Apprentice. There's certain people who were so legendary that, that you can just survive on your old music and tour the world for the rest of your life. So, but Tretch and Vinny and KG, they wanna make a new album, they wanna make new music and they want you to help fund it. So for $75, <laughs> you get an Instagram shout out or a voicemail. Hold on. For $3,000, if you pledge that to their kickstart for this new album, remember they need $100,000, you can get a tattoo with Tretch at his favorite tattoo salon here in Manhattan. Well, that's kind of big. For $5,000, you get to dance in their video. So, we here at Wendy are involved in all kind of stuff. Remember I was telling you that our Norman, the black one, uh, uh, pledged money on Kickstart for TLC to have their album come out, but then TLC's business thing kind of went a little cattywampus and, 
And Norman has been drumming his fingers, waiting, because he pledged $10, and you were yeah. supposed to get a handwritten note, right? Yeah. And, and you didn't get the note, wait, you pledged back in November? Uh-huh, I got it in November. Okay, but you uh -huh. pledged many months before? Many months before. Do we have the note? We have it. Where is it? it? There it is. Oh! Okay, first of all, I want my $10 back. Because this is not a note with all two girls signing it. This is a list of their favorite songs. According to what Norman says, this is a list of their songs, but nobody signed it XOXO, you know, Love t Boz or anything like that. And I don't even know who did the writing. So with Naughty by Nature though, we're back in the pledging game. So we here at the Wendy Show have pledged $5,000. Well, we're about to. Yeah, we haven't done it yet because we just found out about the story this morning, but give us a moment. 5,000 bucks is going towards a new Naughty album. So now they need $95,000. Look, but we're pledging it on behalf of Norman because he's gonna dance in the video. <laughs> and he's gonna tip his glasses and give you Hot Topic Shade. Anyway, uh, so shout out to you, Naughty by Nature. What's good, Jersey? Amy Schumer, I love you, never met you, but I love you. But you need to keep your eye on your new boyfriend. I know that you're so in love and Ben might be a nice guy behind closed doors, but he's not putting it out there. As a, you know what I love about Amy? Clearly, she's not wearing Spanx, like she's comfortable. <laughs> I don't mean that in a shady way. I mean that in a, she accepts her body for what she is. We all, we girls know the belly button mark. If she was wearing Spanx, you know, she wouldn't have that. I think she looks terrific and she's very comfortable with herself. Yeah. But she's got this new boyfriend and his name is Ben, there he is. Okay, so um, she, she cast him in her new show. Um, called Inside Amy Schumer. <laughs> now, what I don't like about this is that we talked about Ben and Amy being together and very happy. When last we talked was, I think last week, I told you that he's a furniture designer. He makes like really good furniture, including a swing set at the kitchen table. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, he ma he's like Aiden, you know, from Sex and the City, <laughs> right? He makes very unique furniture, but he's secretly, from what we found out, has always been an aspiring actor. Oh. Why, in 2014, he spent a glob of money on acting lessons, allegedly. Oh. So now he's with Amy, and Amy might be a great, like you just got to watch an opportunist. I think that she should be worried that he might be using her. Yes. You know? Um, Maybe she should wait like three years before introducing him to the acting world as far as a job. Yes. Let him saw that furniture and hammer that nail <laughs> and make, tab like make tables, you know, until I find out exactly who you are and that you're not opportunizing off, off my good fortune, you know? I mean, he even went so far as to say about her on social media, I won the lottery. Oh. Now, you could take that two ways. You know, you could take that in the loving way, or you could take that in the using way. But when a guy is brand new in your life, or a girl is brand new in your life, and they refer to you as the lottery, I'm looking side eye. You know, it's like when Sofia Vergara was with Nick Lobes. Now, you know Nick is the one that they have the two babies in the Petri dish. Right, they're trying to figure that out because she's moved on. But you know, when Sofia was with Nick, and you know he's that onion crunch king, you know, he makes those onions that you put on top of the string beans at Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, you know that he, number one, pushed his way into the White House on a very, at, excuse me, at a very formal gala where he put onion crunch on each table. Yeah, he got there early. 
<laughs> you know, he was only invited because of Sophia, but he's putting onion crunch on people's tables. And then, and then remember when she was down south um, filming that movie that didn't do so well with um, Reese Witherspoon, he pushed his way into wanting a part on the movie. She had, she's like talking to Reese one day and then turns around, baby, <laughs> what are you doing here? He finagled his way into some sort of thing. Of course, Sophia's the uh, star, so she put the kibosh on that. But you just gotta watch out for people trying to use you. You know what I mean? That's all, Amy. <laughs>